Well, this person says, I'm wondering how to begin an oil painting in regard to values. I learned to paint in the dark values first, but my paintings lean too dark. Can I start with the lightest values? Would that help? Well, that probably do more harm than good. Well, there are two reasons, really, why your painting might be going too dark. One could be a very simple one. Now, whether you're painting in oil or acrylic or watercolor or pastel, it doesn't matter what. If your studio lighting is too bright, your tendency is to make your paintings too dark. The same is true if you're painting in plain air. If paint in plain air in the sun without any kind of shield, anything to shield the light, your paintings are going to end up too dark because the light is going to make you think that you see it lighter than you really do. So we have quick tip 306 about lighting for those who are doing studio, who are working studio lighting. That uh, guides you about the uh, how to control the amount of light that you actually paint under. So that is really, really important. And those of you who are plain air painters, always paint under some sort of a light shield, a white umbrella or some way to shield the light so that you don't have that bright, bright light that will mislead you about your values. The other one is unique to oil. Now with watercolor, the approach, technical approach we use with watercolor generally is light to dark, painting light to dark. Uh, in acrylic, the problem doesn't exist because it's a technical problem with acrylic. If you start out with your lights, then uh, there, that paint is probably going to dry before you really start putting in darks. But structurally, even that, you will come uh, nearer to getting a well-balanced painting if you begin with the darks. That's not the answer to the question. The answer to the question is specific to oil paint. What happens with oil paint? Now, uh, it's very important, one thing, is that you learn to see the values that you're mixing. Because if you see the values you're mixing and in, in relationship to where they belong on the painting, then you will come nearer to being able to control that business. So make, you'll be able to make your lights light enough. So I'm going to take it from two points of view. One is this. If you make an area too light, and I'll just show you that right here. Let's just, I'll just randomly grab a little color. And let's say if you make an area, if you were to uh, start light and work towards dark, here's the danger, you, here's the yeah, danger that you run into. Say if, if you had an area, say like a, a shadow area of that chicken right there, and if you made it this light, like that, or if you made that value, you think, well, that looks down, uh, dark enough because you see around it, you have the white canvas, and you think that's dark enough, and then you discover it's got to be darker. If When you're trying to make that light, when you're trying to make that dark darker with oil, the dark that you put in there tends to want to get muddy. It's not as clear as the dark is if you have it darker, and I'll show you that. If you start out darker and make it lighter in oil, the dark is clearer. Uh, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't have that tendency to go so muddy, that is, unless you brush it to death. So if I started out too dark in an area, uh, let's say uh, in areas such as, let's just put, uh, I'll just do something like right in here. So, so if I started out too dark like that, and I saw then that it was too dark and it needed to be a little bit lighter. Because of the nature of oil paint, I can make it lighter without it getting muddy. I can make it lighter and it still retains its, its brilliance. And so let's see if I can get it about the same value as that. 
Uh, so you see that there's a technical reason there why oil works better if you work from dark to light. So let's now let's get away from the technical reason and look at how do you really see the values that you're putting there. If you learn to see those values correctly and learn to mix them to correctly, you're going to be okay. So if we look at the lighter, now I want to just use a portion of this, this particular chicken because it has all these values in it and it has, also has the lighter values around it which is one thing I really want to address with you. Alright, so suppose now uh, you're, you're painting that chicken and, and you've made the value, you've got the values on the, the um, you, you're working dark to light. Let's say you're working dark to light. And so we have this really, really dark value area right here, like that. And let's see, you've got, there we go. So if it's not the darks that you're having trouble with, you've got that area like that. And then you're getting a little bit lighter. How can you be sure that this light here and this light here are light enough? Well, the way you can be sure is by comparing. So for one thing, you see the light right here. If I mix that light, this lighter area right here, so let's say I'm trying to get that light, and if I have a tendency to get too dark, one way I can correct that, I say, okay, that looks light enough against my palette. This looks not light enough. I hold it here and I see it's too dark. So one, one really, really good way you could do that is use little test strips like this. Three by five cards, you buy in dollar store, maybe about a buck a pack. Just cut them into little strips and carry them with you wherever you go. And then when you're mixing color and you're trying to control, you're trying to solve that problem, rather than guess, always test it out before you put the color down. You see, that's way too dark. It may look light enough when I first mix it, but it's way too dark. So then if I do it that way, you see, I see it's too dark. Then I can lighten it some more. And test that. And I'll test that on the other end. Always use a clean area when you're using test strips. Now let's, ch let's check out that value. You see, that's closer. That's closer to the light value I'm seeing there. And so then if I put that value here, you see then that looks, that, that, enables that light to look lighter because I compared it and I'm comparing the, the dark to the light and I'm able to see that. What about this? It could be that the, the ground you might perceive to be uh, light but you're really making it too dark. You will use the same method uh, but let's just show you here. So I will uh, Let's just get ourselves a green there. Now, if I'm looking at that, I can detect, and you can too, that this is lighter than the area right here. So I see it's lighter. How much lighter is it? Uh, one way I could do that is if I use the value scale and, and check it against the value scale. So if I move the value scale, I've got, I've got little holes punched in my value scale, so I could hold it, you know, I could hold it like this and look, close one eye and do that comparison if I'm working plain air, which does help. But, say if I do this, and I say, look, well, it's a little bit darker than this value, and, well, it's about the same value as this value. So this is the value I'm looking for right here. And so, when I'm mixing then, I can mix, for, I can mix towards that value. Um, Let's see, let's do that. You see, I'm showing you two methods for going about this now. And so let's just pull some more yellow into that. And uh, you see that obviously feels a little bit dark. But now it's beginning to feel lighter because it's lighter on my palette. And I might think I'm light enough, but am I? All right, so if I read that value, it's this value. And then another way I can do that is to double check, I can hold my brush, I can mix a color, mix a value of a color, and I can hold my brush against the color, the value scale, and I can squint. And does it look too dark? I can squint. I can also hold it this way, or once again, I can do this. 
Now, and it, is it too dark? Is it too light? Is it just right? You see, it's too dark. So see, that will tell you if you if you use a comparison method like that, where you you think it's light enough, it looks light enough on the color wheel, uh, but then when you actually make the comparison, ah, it's too dark. So then it then you force yourself. Whether you think it should be that light or not, you force yourself and make it lighter. And let's use a fresh area on the on the test strip here. And now let's compare that. That's that's close. That's pretty much in that light value range. And so then if we place that here, it's going to it's going to be light enough. You see what we've done there. So we've got that value comparison. Now of course when you're painting on a white canvas, if it's not toned, if you put your darks in first, uh, you will get that comparison always because you'll have your darks in and you can p compare the lights here with the darks you're seeing here. On the other hand, if you start with your lights first, you have no way of comparing the lights except against the canvas. And the, can the canvas is, unless you've toned it dark, and that's not always a good idea, uh, but you have no comparison. If you have your darks in there first, you do have that comparison, and so that will enable you to get those lights lighter. So I think maybe if you will just slow down, do some practice sessions where you actually practice uh, making this comparison. Use these little test strips. They don't cost that much, and they really are a help where you guide yourself just by asking the question uh, when you mix the paint and compare it here. Does it need to be darker? It doesn't need to be lighter. Give that a try and see if that doesn't work for you. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMinds.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.